Hello, and thank you so much for coming. Uh, my name is Lori Silverbush. I am one of the directors of the movie you just saw. I uh, started working on this project in 2008 um, because I was aware of the problem, although my awareness then is nothing quite like it, it is now, but I, I knew that people were going hungry. Um, I had a relationship with a little girl I was mentoring who I discovered was going hungry and with uh, pretty horrible consequences in almost every aspect of her life. Uh, and I decided to look into it um, and use the tool that I had, which was filmmaking, to explore it further. Uh, I partnered with uh, Christy Jacobson, my co-director, who unfortunately could not be here tonight, um, but sends her regards to the state of West Virginia. And um, uh, about a year into our process, we teamed up with Participant Media, the um, company that helped us to produce this film and is a uh, very respected um, presence in, in the world of issue documentaries. They've made films like Food, Inc. and uh, Waiting for Superman and Inconvenient Truth. They were sort of a very natural partner for, and we approached them uh, and happily they were they were interested in partnering with us on this film and funding the film. Uh, and um, one of the most respected voices in the space was that of, of Janet Poppendick, who, as you saw, she appears in the film, and she can certainly speak for herself as to uh, her involvement with the issue. But that's, um, that's who I am. So thank you very much for being here and for watching the film. Appreciate it. So I'm Jan Poppendick, and I was until very recently a professor of sociology at Hunter College, the City University of New York. And um, my involvement with the film was really based on some books that I've written. I wrote a book called Sweet Charity, Question Mark, Emergency Food and the End of Entitlement, and more recently a book about school food called Free for All, Fixing School Food in America. And Laurie and Christy came to see me pretty early in the process. Um, and I have to tell you that I was a little bit of a film, hunger film skeptic, I guess you could say. Um, you saw the clip in there from Jeff Bridges' film of 10 years ago, um, but I have a very long hunger film memory, and I actually remember that there was even an earlier film called A Place at the Table. So I approached this with a degree of skepticism, but I have to tell you that I'm very excited about this film, and part of it is because I think it's especially well done, that the filmmakers found stories that really elucidated the issue and that helped us to confront the kinds of things that come up, so that you hear from people if you mention that you work on the issue of hunger in America or that you, in fact, want a higher food stamp allotment, people will say, well, you know, but what about all this obesity? How can people be hungry and obese at the same time? And I think the film does a really good job with showing how that happens in our country. Um, and it's also because of, of participant media. Um, none of those other films I mentioned, even Jeff Bridges' film, got out the way this film, I and mean, this film has been being shown in, in regular mainline theaters. Um, and so I'm hopeful that it's going to move along a national conversation because I don't think that there are a lot of Americans who want people to go hungry. I think we just haven't understood what it will take to get us to the place where we're sharing healthy food for all our people. So I'm hopeful. Uh, my name is Christian McGuigan. I have the great opportunity to work on films like this with my colleague Wendy Cohen. And uh, Participant Media is a different kind of film company. Um, we're actually founded by a gentleman by the name of Jeff Skoll, who believed that a good story, well told, can change the way that we look at the world. And so that's really what Participant's mission is, is to create entertainment that inspires and accelerates social change. Uh, Lori mentioned some of the films we do. We also do narrative films. Uh, we did a little film called Lincoln that you guys may have seen. Uh, we did a film called The Help, uh, another one called Snitch that's out right now. We've done about 43 films in the, uh, about nine plus years that we've been in business. But every single project that we take on has to have this element of social action um, that, that is within the film. And then what uh, Wendy and I do and our, our team does uh, back in Los Angeles is we take that issue, 
we find the experts in the space and we try to identify what's the unmet need where an unbelievable film like this can work and where our social action team can, can jump in and uh, you know, can activate whether it be education and awareness, personal behavior change, or legislative change. Wherever that might help, we try to act as a megaphone and as a spotlight for that. Hi everyone, I'm Wendy Cohen and uh, I'm the Senior Director of Film Campaigns, a participant working very closely with a few more colleagues on the social action campaign for a place at the table. We've been very uh, grateful that we have filmmakers like Lori and Christy who have been our North Stars and making sure that uh, we're getting it right. But we built, and I encourage all of you, I don't know if you saw at the end, it's very quick, but to text food to 77177, that, um, that will get you into our social action campaign and we will send ways to get involved in local statistics right to your phone. And you can also visit us at takepart.com slash table. And when you go there and you take action, we have, or we built the first ever national action center where you can find legislative national policy actions and you can type in your zip code and find local ways that you can help end hunger in your community. And you know, one thing that we're incredibly grateful uh, to Senator Unger for finding us and or going to see the movie in Washington and then getting in touch with us and saying that he wanted to put an evening like this together. This is, this is why Participant makes the movie. This is like the greatest phone call we could receive and we are extremely excited about the, the movement that's happening here in West Virginia and we want to make sure that this film, uh, if anything, can accelerate that conversation. I was in Vermont. Um, I mentioned, I think, that I retired from teaching sociology, but, but not from working on issues of food and hunger and poverty. So I was in Vermont where a group of advocates is launching a campaign um, they're hoping to make Vermont the first state to, um, to have universal free school meals. We can come back and talk about that a little later if you like. But anyway, I did my thing in Vermont and I was riding home and my cell phone rang. And it was this journalist in West Virginia. West Virginia, where's that? Okay. <laughs> and he was, is the son of an old friend of mine with whom I had connected while I was in Vermont. This old friend of mine, Huck Gutman from my college days, um, had been uh, working in Washington as the chief of staff to one of Vermont senators, Bernie Sanders, and now he was back in Vermont. And apparently he had told his son that he'd gone to hear someone talking about universal free school meals, and his son said, the West Virginia Senate just passed a feed to achieve, well, I think it wasn't passed quite then, but is considering this bill that would move the state in the direction of food for all children who need it, for universal free meals for schools and, and in situations where kids are hungry. So he, he called my cell phone and I was um, telling Senator Unger, I'm Mm, technologically challenged. Mm -hmm. And one of my technological challenges, I can never find my cell phone when it rings in my great big bag, but that's the one time I got the call. <laughs> and so he interviewed me sort of then and there, and I guess you won't be surprised if I say that I was surprised. I didn't associate West Virginia with um, innovative, progressive legislation <laughs> moving toward and leading the nation. I have to tell you that since I got that call and did some looking around, I have to tell you that West Virginia is way ahead of the curve on a number of school food issues. You have no a la carte food in your schools. That's a huge issue in terms of, it's a, a practice in most of the states of the union that really undermines the, the health of the school meal because you know, kids go through the line and they get the healthy balanced meal and then they get a Rice crispy treat or a, a bag of chips and then they get to their place and then they eat the Rice crispy thing or the bag of chips and they don't eat the vegetable or salad. You don't have a la carte in West Virginia. Congratulations. And in a number of ways, you're, you're ahead of the curve and I'm thrilled that your, that your Senate is leading with this legislation. I think it's gonna start a real conversation in West Virginia about what are the best ways to make sure our kids get the nourishment they need in order to learn and we have the healthiest kids we can get. If charity were going to end this, we wouldn't have hunger anymore because we've never had a greater charitable response ever. And one of the things that motivated this movie, in addition to my relationship with 
with the girl that I mentioned to you. Uh, I'm actually married to Tom Colicchio, who's in the movie. And he's asked to do, he's actually at a fundraiser right now, he's asked to do a fundraiser almost every night of the week. Uh, many of them are to raise money for hunger. And he had never raised more money. Uh, there was one night in particular, I remember we sat at a fundraiser for the Food Bank of New York City, and they raised over a million dollars in one night. Uh, and everybody sat there feeling so good, so good. And they, the, it, the number of meals that they were able to provide, they, I think it was up on a big screen as the number went up, the meals went up and everybody went home and I sat there thinking, nobody in this room is asking why. Why are we even in this position? What's going on? And as somebody who has done a lot of charity, believed in it my whole life and still do, was raised to, to help in my community, I started to almost resent. I almost started to feel as if charity is a very, very good thing, but without an honest inquiry as to what's going on underneath the charity, if that's not there, then you gotta ask who the charity's really for. And that's what started to happen for me and made me want to, to ask those questions. And I know we live in a nation with enough food. Um, uh, one of, of Jan's colleagues, Dr. Marian Nessel, who's in the film, says we have more than double the calories that we need in terms of what we produce and what we bring into this country to feed everybody healthfully and well. I mean, more than double. So it is not an issue of scarcity. Uh, if charity were going to fix this, it would have. Um, and I think we learned the example of that film in 1968 that CBS produced where Americans saw kids starving and thought, wait a minute, I thought that only happened in China or whatever they, they believed at the time. They were outraged and they spoke up and they called their leaders and their leaders were real leaders and responded. And within a, a very short span of time, in a Nixon administration, hardly a socialist, they had managed to put together bipartisan legislation and then funded it and modernized it so that it was you know, the appropriate policies. And we nearly wiped out hunger by the end of the 1970s. And it was the opposite of leadership that got us back to where we are today. So knowing that, I was so inspired to, to make a film that activated people to take part in our great democracy and get their voices heard. And when people say, well, what can we do? I say, pick up the phone or email or tweet or Facebook your representatives and let them hear from you. Because when I'm on the Hill, I have our, our members of Congress saying, I'm not getting calls, I'm not getting emails. So as far as I'm concerned, it might be an issue, but I'm not hearing from people. But if I do hear from people, I'll start to pay attention. They count how many people call them in a day on any given issue. Um, and I had Senator Jim McGovern, Representative Jim McGovern tell me that when six people in his district call him, six, he starts to go, whoa, is this a trend? And starts to think about all the thousands who might feel the same way who aren't calling, and he starts to revisit his thinking on an issue. Now, I don't know if that's the same for you, Senator, but I do know that that really, really hit home for me and hopefully people will walk away from this movie and say, I don't have a right to be mad at government if I haven't even yet told them that this matters to me. Let's, let's tell them first, and then let's see if they are able to, to do something about it. I believe they are. So if we could shift some of the subsidy from the corn and soy and the things that are the prime ingredients of snack foods and shift those to fresh fruits and vegetables, we could, you saw the, the chart that turned out to be a big X, the, the uh, cost of fresh fruits and vegetables rising and the cost of the junk food declining. We could reverse that. And I think what Lori said about democracy when, when you open the issue applies really strongly here because for years, people who were not directly involved in large-scale farming thought, oh, the farm policy, oh, that, I can't understand that. What is parity? And, you know, people 
it, we felt that it didn't affect us. But of course it did affect us profoundly. And now there's a lot of education out there. It's, if you text, um, what Wendy told you to text, I told you I'd love Food <laughs> to 77177. Right, that. The word, the word food to 77177. Okay. Or if you get the book, you want to tell me yes. about the, oh, the thank book? Yes, oh, you, yes. Um, you can get up to, to, to speed on this. And so then you can call your representatives mm -hmm. and your members of Congress and your senators in Washington and say, I'm watching and I care. Mm -hmm. And so I, I really think that there is a food movement bubbling up all over mm -hmm. the country and we can all be part of it and it can make a difference. Jen and, uh, and Lori are a wonderful contributors to a book that we put together. Called, it's called A Place at the Table, and it's a companion to the film. Many of the experts from the movie contributed a chapter, and there are a few additional voices in there. It's, it's fantastic. It's, uh, if it's not at your local library, it should be there soon. Um, but you should you know, look it up, and please you know, tell others. It's a really fantastic book, and we're very grateful that we had contributions from both Jen and Lori. Record levels of poverty in this country are, are numerous. There's a whole mosaic of contributing factors. But one of the things I'm personally struck by and that I hope this movie really addresses is the false rhetoric and the fake dialogue that substitutes for meaningful inquiry uh, at the highest levels right now is astonishing to me. And when we can talk about this in terms of takers and handouts and use language like that and allow language like that at ar around our own coffee tables and dinner tables when the truth is when 50 million people are affected by a condition, you, it is simply inappropriate to use words like takers. When people are fulfilling their end of the social contract and working, 75% of people who are getting government assistance, food assistance, have a full-time job, a full-time working adult in the household, it's insulting and it's insulting to the intelligence of everybody else. And it allows us to have a, um, a misrepresentation of what's really going on. And so one of the things that I encourage people who see this movie to do is get the facts, but in the absence of that, don't let other people continue to use the kind of damning language that puts the blame squarely on the people who are uh, the victims in this. Um, hold people accountable who should be accountable and uh, stop blaming the poor for their own condition. And take a look at what's happened to wages. Mm, yeah, for sure. Uh, has, has example after example of where our government leaders have pulled together as they're doing right here, right now in West Virginia and said, this is a problem that's simply too big for individuals to tackle. And we're going we're gonna to do what a first world nation does, which is bring the best minds to bear and figure it out and enlist the support of, of, of citizens to do that. So uh, that's another example of rhetoric that isn't true. Um, you know, we had yellow fever and cholera at the turn of, this uh, of the last century. And people just thought, well, they'll always be with us. There's poor people. Those are the diseases of the poor. The best we can do is help take care of them, do charity to make it a little better. And then when the science actually showed that it was tainted water that caused these diseases, not an act of God for bad decisions that poor people make, we realized we could bring fresh water into, into urban places and get fresh water to people. And miraculously, these diseases melted away. They're not even in the social consciousness anymore, but they were, there was a time when you couldn't go anywhere without being confronted with it. And government did that. There, it, so there is a role and a responsibility for smart, good governance. And, and I, I applaud the, the leaders in this community for deciding to, um, to follow in that kind of footstep, so. And from, from, yeah, no, that's a round of applause. <laughs> and from, from participant media's perspective and, and the social action team is, our campaigns don't end when the movie comes out. They're not traditional marketing campaigns. Um, they end when the issue ends, until that, the, 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 the needle is moved on that social issue. So. Um, it's going to continue and evolve as the, the life of this movie evolves and as it touches more people and, and turns their hearts and sort of one of the mantras that our team likes to talk about, at least working on this film, is instead of standing in judgment of the, of the way the poor deal with their burdens, um, instead, instead we stand in awe 
of what the poor have to endure. One of the things that drives me crazy about the, the subsidies is that they go to these astronomical levels for individual owners or individual corporations. Um, I actually think we can't do away with the basic commodity subsidies in one swell foop overnight because I think they're too integrated into the agricultural economy. So I would like to see them drawn down over a period of years. But we can certainly cap them to individual farms. And there was an amendment, Dorgan Grassley, in the farm bill before the last one that would have capped them at um, just a quarter of a million each, and even that couldn't pass. So while we're um, hostile to, or many people are, to the idea of raising the food stamp allotment from that average of $3 a day, Congress is continuing to fund agricultural subsidies with essentially no ceiling, sky's the limit. So I'd like to see that. I'd like to see us move toward a more realistic national minimum wage. When the minimum wage was first instituted, okay, don't, don't have to educate this audience on that, but it used to be a wage that would support a family of three or a family of four. Now it won't even keep an individual out of poverty. Okay, so we need to make some progress there. We need to um, close those offshore. I've been hearing this stuff about all the money in the Cayman Islands, and, and we need to close those loopholes and bring some of that money back into our economy where it can, we can tax it and it can be used for, okay. But I could sit up here for a long while and, and promote my pet um, answers, but I think what Lori was trying to say is really the, the heart of democracy is for us, for you to talk to each other, for us to talk to each other, for me to go home to my congressional district and talk with my neighbors about what we want our representative to do, because these problems are not insoluble. I can only tell you that for me, I brought what I knew how to do, which was to make a movie. I thought if I could get the stories of the people who are living this out, people's own innate humanity and caring for each other will take over. And that has certainly been my experience with this film. Um, and it's taking on a life of its own in that more and more people are clicking into the message uh, we're hearing from them. They're getting it. 